power in that blood. Amen. There's salvation in the blood. There's redemption in the blood. There's healing in the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for Calvary this morning. Amen. Praise God. We've got a lot out this morning. Some are traveling, going to different places. We need to pray for those that are on the road this morning. Continue to pray for Sister Crudis. I'm praying y'all don't even have to go to Denver, brother. Wouldn't that be nice? Praying for Sister Mills, Sister Vanjie, still lifting her up in prayer. Sister Jones, Sister Watts, Brother Gillespie, Timothy, Monica Hernandez, Laura Renteria, Margaret McGraw, uh, Greg Randall and family. Sister Randall passed away. For those of y'all who remember him when he was here preaching revival, um, she, she finally went home. God took her home. Amen. Tina Grant, Samantha Vela, Lucy Gutierrez. The Hunts are traveling. The Schultes are traveling. The, the Crawfords are traveling. Galvan. One day I'm going to travel. I'm going to make it home. <laughs> Amen. Galvan's Sister Galvan's out of town. Need to have a couple of special prayer requests. One from for Tara. She needs healing for breast cancer. And another one for Dan Sager. He's recovering from a stroke. No, I didn't know I was supposed to. If you have a need this morning by the lifting of your hands, God knows every need. He knows every situation. I pray, that you, I pray God that will touch each and every one of you. If you'll come down to the altar and let the elders anoint you with oil today. In Jesus' name.
I'll do it. I'll try. He is fairer. the Lord. Let's thank him. Hallelujah. It's good to be, amen, in the house of the Lord today. What beautiful singing today. What wonderful songs, amen, with a message, praise God, to remind us, praise the Lord. Now, Brother Hampton's already made a statement, praise God. There are those, amen, that are gone because, amen, they have taken a trip and they are traveling, praise God. Well, there's coming a day I'm going to take a trip, amen, <laughs> praise the Lord, and I won't be back. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's called the rapture of the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's the day. That's the trip. Amen. You don't want to miss. And you want to make sure that your bags are already packed and you're ready to go. You want to make sure you've already made your reservation. You don't want to wait till the last second, praise God, to try to make things right with God. Amen. We need to know the Lord today. We need to be right with God every moment of the day. Praise God. Is there anybody that's thankful today for what God is doing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank you, brother and sister Halterman, brother Hamilton. The church looks great today. You did a tremendous job. Praise God. Amen. Special thanks to Sister Halterman. Amen. Because when she showed up Friday morning, she brought burritos. Amen. And these burritos had jalapenos in there just for me. And I thank God for that. Praise God. Amen. But the church does look great. Praise God today. And uh, again, amen. Today is Father's Day. What a tremendous day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, it can be a good day to be a father and a bad day to be a father. It depends, amen, on where, amen, you line up in the scriptures with the word of the Lord. Amen. Because if you read your Bible, there were good fathers, and then there were some that were not so good fathers. Praise God. And it had a, um, it had a tremendous effect. Amen. Praise God. Amen. A devastating effect if you were not a godly father. Amen. And so there's a responsibility today for being a dad, uh, being a dad and a father, even just because you fostered a child or brought a child into this world, that doesn't make you a godly father. But with that role and that responsibility, God has given you, amen, praise God, such, amen, an obligation. Uh, you are to instruct your family in the ways of God. You're to be the example of the home. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I don't ever want to uh, forget that. Praise the Lord. Uh, this Tuesday, uh, or Monday night, excuse me, is prayer night. Amen. We're going to cancel it because evidently this is a holiday uh, for some people, and so there's no prayer on Monday night. Uh, the Bible study this afternoon that us men have at 3 o'clock this afternoon is canceled so that you can enjoy your Father's Day at home. Now, in my case, I get to enjoy Father's Day at home. That means I get to do the dishes, and I'm going to have to do the laundry, and I'm going to have to carry out the trash, and blessed Father's Day. Praise God. I'm teasing. Amen. Sister Cruz has prepared. Amen. A tremendous meal today. Praise God. Amen. So that we can share some time uh, together. Praise God. Amen. Are there any specials today? No specials today. And that's okay. That's all right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you guys don't respond, I'm going to sing. So you're going to have to shout, praise the Lord. Amen. Tuesday, again, this Tuesday, all those that, that will help us, amen, we want to declare another fast day for Tuesday. We fasted last Tuesday. We are fasting of those that are sick. We're fasting, amen. Uh, we'd like to see Sister Crudis healed in two weeks. In two weeks, if the Lord does not intervene, we will be headed to Colorado uh, for some major testing on my wife and to find out, amen, why she's not able to breathe without oxygen. And um, we're praying that they can find out some things 
uh, praise God. And so there's a possibility we may be gone for 11 days. Uh, I will be making out an itinerary. There will be those that will be preaching uh, on those days that we are gone. And I'm praying, amen, that they find out something immediately or the Lord intervenes so we don't have to go. But that way we don't have to be gone for 11 days, amen, praise God. Um, I enjoy being in my own house of worship, amen. I like being at my home church. I do like visiting. We've already mapped out a church we will be in. While we're gone, we will be in church. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so uh, because in my mind, I'm thinking if, if the Lord doesn't heal her here, he might heal her there, being in the house of the Lord, because God honors faith. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see each and every one of you. Why don't you put your hands together today and let's clap. Amen. Unto our heavenly Father. Amen. Praise God. Man, I tell you what, you've never had a better father than our Heavenly Father. You can be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. Brother uh, Richard has prepared something for the fathers. Want him to come at this time. Amen. Praise God. Come on up, Brother Richard. Amen. So you can present this. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I'm not mistaken, is this a box lunch? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Praise God. Do you want something to say? Uh, just thank the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's got something for the men today, for the fathers. Praise the Lord. If you are a father, amen, would you stand? Amen. Praise God. All fathers need to stand. Brother Benjamin, you're a, you're a dad. Stand up. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you're a father, amen, we've got a gift for you. Praise God. Amen. All right. Brother Richard, help us out. Okay. Okay, this one here is for Brother Bishop. Amen. Praise God. He says, thank you. Amen. That is yours from Brother Richard. Brother Richard did this, and this comes with a straw. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, who we got next? Amen. We got Brother Yanez. Brother Yanez, come on up here. Praise God. Okay? Yeah. All right. Amen. From what I understand, you do not have to share this with anyone. Amen. Praise God. All right, who's next, brother? We got Brother Benjamin Ardonis. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on up here, Brother Benjamin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did this one come with instructions? Because he'll need them. Amen. No, that's not to grow your hair. That's, that's to help your tonsils. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? Maybe we need to start praying for a miracle cure in that area. Amen. Praise God. All right. Who we got next? Okay. Brother Pulat. Where's Brother Pulat? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now that's from Brother Richard. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. The Lord helped Brother Richard to do this. This is something he, he wanted to do. Okay. Brother Schulte is not here. Okay. Yeah. And the way this works is if you're not here, uh, we keep him. No, no, we'll make sure that he gets that amen when he comes back. So we'll lay this right here. Okay, we'll make sure Brother Schulte gets his. Who else we got, brother? Okay, Brother Good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now, this is what they call a straw. I don't, I don't know if they have those in Arkansas, but praise God. Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, brother Clark. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, don't shake it because it might pop. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Who else you got, brother? Brother Crudus. Where's Brother Crudus? That one comes with, that one comes with a pacifier. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? <laughs> All right. Brother Nieves, amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, brother. Praise God. Amen. Now, there is a handsome man. It's a good thing you took after your grandpa. You know that? Amen. Praise God. Brother Hunt, he's not here, so he forfeits his too. No. Amen. They're all traveling. They were going to be with family for Father's Day. Praise God. We have Brother Halterman. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Brother Halterman. Praise God. Now, you don't have to share that with your wife. Okay. The burritos were excellent, brother. The more jalapenos, though. Um, okay, yeah, this says um, Carlton. Who's Carlton? <laughs> Brother Hamilton. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget when that happened. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. Brother Guzman. Is that it? Thank you, Brother Richard. Thank you. Now, gentlemen, I want you to know that Brother Richard did this out of his own heart. Amen. He wanted to do something for the men of the church and for the dads. Praise God. Now, that's something, amen, that I will cherish. Brother Richard, amen, praise God. He even got me a little nightlight outside, amen, in my backyard. And uh, you stick it in the ground. It's on a long pole. It's a, it's, a, it's a tractor. And during the day, it's solar, and it collects all this energy. And at night, man, it's re I love it. I got there to sit outside just to watch the tractor. Amen. I love it. It's in my backyard. Sister Cruz will tell you that was one of the greatest gifts I ever got. It's like a nightlight. Amen. Praise God. And it's red. It's a red tractor. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All of the fathers stand up. I have something for every father that's in here today. How are we doing? Thank you. Okay. All right. I want you guys to help me out. Okay. Okay, every father, would you please come up here? We have a gift card for you, amen, to go out and eat on. When your wife won't cook for you, you have, <laughs> amen, make sure every father gets one right. and bring the others back, okay? No, they're not named. It just says, Happy Father's Day. Amen. Praise God. It's a little gift card so you can go out and eat, amen, and you can even take your spouse out with you, amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Brother Chris got one. Yeah. Yeah. You did good, brother. You did awesome. Every father, amen, gets a gift card. We're talking about fathers. Fathers not. Okay. Sister, you're not a father. You cannot, no, you're not a father. I don't care if you're in the Catholic Church. You'll never be a father. <laughs> Amen. All right, let me have the extras here. Praise God. Amen. Because we've still got Brother Hunt, Brother Schulte. We've got um, uh, the, Craw uh, not the Crawfords, but... Uh, Anyways, but that's for all the men, amen, praise God, the fathers, amen. We just want to say happy Father's Day. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord and being an example, amen, praise God, being an example, praise the Lord. Now, before I go into the preaching, we dismiss the Sunday school class here, amen. I want everybody, before you leave, I want you to take a look at this picture. I bought this many, many years ago. Um, I was, it's when I began to start preaching, uh, my wife and I saw that and I said, I have to have that. And it shows a father, it's entitled on the bottom, it says spiritual warfare. And then there's a scripture, it starts with a scripture and it's found in James 5, 16. And it says, uh, for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, the reason why this picture meant so much to me is the artist was well known, and so uh, it's one of those that's numbered. It's a numbered uh, portrait. But anyways, it shows a father at night praying over his child, praying over his children. In the background, amen, you can see this is no mistake. There's the sign, amen, there's a cross. We thank God for crucifixion. But in the higher echelon, there are two angels that are warring. One is a dark angel, one is a light angel. And so one is good and one is bad. And so it's called spiritual warfare. And what we see sometimes is we only see the physical. And we never understand that in the realm of the spiritual, there's a battle that's being fought and waged. Amen. And your prayers, praise God, amen, are giving a victory, amen, to your family and to your children. Praise God. Amen.
So you might want to take a look at that before you leave. Uh, we have it hanging up in one of our offices in the back, and I love to look at it. Amen. I have several portraits uh, or pictures that people have given to me, amen, that have spiritual significance to them, and they mean a lot to me. Some have been given to me, and I cherish them. Praise God. I have had them now for 40 years, and I thank God for that. Praise God. Somebody say Sunday school. Children, you're dismissed to your Sunday school classes. Praise the Lord. Amen. I realize it's Father's Day, but, um, you know, a father can do a better job. Amen. Praise God. If he's got a godly wife, amen, to help him. Praise the Lord. That's always vital and important. Praise God. The Bible says one can put to flight a thousand, but two can put to flight 10,000. And so when you and I become yoked together, amen, praise God, there is a power, amen, that cannot be explained by the natural world. Because sometimes we say one can put to flight a thousand, then when we say two, then we say 2,000. Amen. Praise God. But um, anyways, but this here it is, two can set 10,000. Amen. Praise God. And so it's multiplied just by two coming together. Let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I asked and y'all said no. Sister, do you, are you prepared to sing? Because if you're not, I am. Come on up here, sis. Praise God. Amen. Do not move my notes here, okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. What do you mean his guitar? I've got a guitar over here. I keep one up here. Yeah. Amen. No, leave that mic. Don't, don't mess with it. It's going to fall. Okay. It's going to fall. Watch this. Amen. Sister, bail us out, would you? Praise God. We're so sorry. Amen. Praise God.
God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God for what she just sang. All the music. Amen. Today. Now it has uh, it has blessed my heart today. All of these songs. Amen. Because they were bringing back some fond memories but also challenging me, amen, to continue on in well-doing, praise God. It's not a good start, amen, praise God, that makes the difference, although it helps, but it's always the good finish. It's a good end, praise God. Let's stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Praise God, amen. I saw Daniel here earlier today. It was good to see him today. Praise God, amen. Now, I've been missing him, but I think he's been in training Amen. Praise God. Whatever it may be, appreciate all of you being here today. Now, many of you, amen, I prayed for uh, yesterday, prayed for you this morning. Some of you, amen, I, maybe I didn't pray for, but I will pray for you. But there are some people, amen, that we go through hardships, we go through trials, and we all face things. Don't ever think, amen, that the preacher up here is Superman's brother and I never have any problems. I have a lot of problems, and there's frustrations, amen, that we deal with, praise God. But I've just focused my heart and mind, amen, just to say living for God is worth it all. When you look, amen, what's beyond us, amen, the rewards that we're going to get, amen, praise God, it'll all be worth it all when it's all said and done. Amen. Praise God. With that said, we're going to go to the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm going to help us, the book of Genesis, first book of the Bible. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're going to read three places in the book of Genesis, so I'm going to try and narrow some things down. I appreciate you being here today. Praise God. It's a, it's a very special day that's recognized all throughout the Word of God, for the Bible has much to say about fathers. Amen. Praise God. Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 25. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, that's a standing in this church. They don't do it in a lot of churches, but the reason why we like to shout preach the word is because that's what we're focused on. In fact, Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, he said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. But watch what he says, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And so what he's saying, with all patience, just continue. There's sometimes, amen, you're going to have to reprove. You're going to have to rebuke. But you need to exhort, amen, praise God, when it comes to the things of God. Genesis chapter 12, we're going to read the first three verses of Scripture. I will not keep you long standing. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, somebody say, that's Abraham. Okay, amen. Uh, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. He says, and I will make of thee a great nation. I want you to look at the concept, what God has in mind concerning this man, Abram. He says, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now watch. He talks about Abram, and then whose name later is changed to Abraham. He's the father of the faithful. And so he's recognized, amen, by many different religions. The Muslims recognize him. The Jews recognize him as to being a father, amen, of faith, one of the patriarchs of old. Then in verse number 2, it says, but he's not going to be more than just a father. He's going to be made a great nation, amen. And then in verse number 3, and it says, uh, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And so there's a concept here that maybe you have not seen it before, but God is trying to bring us, amen, to something very powerful, that through a man there can become a family, and from a family can become a nation. Amen. All right, Genesis chapter 18. Amen, praise God. Verse uh, 17 through 19. I'm going to keep this, amen, to a... Uh, a hope, amen, praise God. I'm going to try and mainline this. Verse 17, Genesis 18. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. There's that word again. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. 
verse 19, I'll be preaching from all of these verses, but verse 19 holds a uh, special emphasis this morning. Watch what God says concerning Abraham. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Because prior read to you in Genesis chapter 12, i got to handle it now. He says, I'm calling you out, amen, and you're going to be more than just a man. You're going to be a father, and you're going to be a father of a family. And that family you're going to be the father of, amen, shall become a great nation. Amen. And so here, verse 19 says, I know him. This is God's declaration of the man Abraham. He says, I know he will command his children and his household after him. They shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment. One more verse of scripture, Genesis chapter 25. Amen. We're going down through the history now. Amen. Praise God. A family line. Amen. A generation. Genesis chapter 25. Five, verse number 21. So good to have Connie with us this morning. Lima, good to see you again back in the house of the Lord. Praise God. All right. Genesis 25, verse number 21. And the Bible says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. That means he prayed to God. He entreated the Lord. That means he took time to pray concerning his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, which means that the Lord heard his prayer. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Don't tell me prayer doesn't work. Oh, that's right. Amen. I remember praying for children. And then after I got them, I said, God, I wanted godly children. <laughs> Everybody say amen. amen. And so Rebecca, his wife, conceived, verse 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. She prayed. And the Lord said unto her, watch. Didn't say two kids are in your womb. God is stepping up, amen, the program. He already revealed it to Abraham. Now he wants to reveal it, amen, praise God, to Isaac's wife, Rachel. Now watch this. It's all in the lineage. I'm sorry. What did I say? Rachel? Okay, Rebecca, yeah, is Isaac's wife. Amen. If Isaac marries Rachel, he's in sin. All right. I'm sorry. Thank you, sister. Praise God. And the children struggled together, and she inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. I don't have time to preach on that, but that is a great prophetic prophecy. Amen. Praise God. That goes from just the physical into the realm of the spiritual. So I want to preach this morning from these verses of Scripture. Amen. Entitled, The Birth of a Nation. The Birth of a Nation. Amen. Praise God. Brother Hamilton, would you pray? And you may be seated this morning, praise God. Three passages of Scripture with a common thread. It started with the birth of a child, which would result in the birth of a nation. And Genesis 25 was our last reading on purpose because it describes or at least pinpoints, amen, what I want to talk about this morning. Today is Father's Day, and with it a very special recognition of a father's significance in the role that they play in the makeup of the kingdom of God. In our text, three times, amen, there's a promise that is given. Three times, there's a statement that is made that brings a very powerful endorsement uh, of something great, something to be considered for the church today, that a child would actually become a nation Amen. Praise God. Amen. More than just in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God. And these words and these announcements tell us that one child can bring insurmountable opportunities to a world, to a church, and even to 
a home. Those of us, amen, that are parents, we remember when that bundle of joy, amen, was birthed, praise God, amen, and we couldn't wait to hold that little bambino. We just loved on it, praise God. We looked at it, amen. We looked to see our semblance in the face of that little child, but while we were looking to see mama and daddy in that child, we have forgotten to see God in that child. Amen. Because we were made in the image of God. And so there are some things here, amen, that I would like for us to understand. That when that child was born, amen, it brought something of great joy into the house and into the home. And the opportunities, amen, of what that child could become for the kingdom of God. You see, when I read to you in Genesis, it speaks of a world that was young back then. And I believe what was true uh, during that day is still true today. And this book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, has come full circle again today. For there to be a great nation, it begins with our children. Our children being led, our children being taught, and our children being raised in the ways of the Lord. And most significantly, Dad, you're at the center of this. You have a tremendous responsibility. Like Abraham, you've been entrusted and called to be a nation builder. Praise God. There's some things that you are going to do in this child's life. Some examples you're going to portray. You're going to be used, amen, to bring this child to its fullest potential. Nations, amen, are conceived and then born. What that means is they are envisioned and then they are birthed. And we find that in Genesis chapter 25. When I was married with my wife, and still am, thank God, amen, but when we began began to talk about having a child. We envisioned a child, praise God, and then the child, amen, was born. And so anything that comes about, amen, praise the Lord, must first be envisioned. What do you envision, amen, that child to become in the Lord? The Bible says that there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. I don't want my children just to be people of the earth. I want them to be people of God. I want them to use of the Lord, praise God. So the message to Rebecca in Genesis chapter 25 was that there were two nations in your womb. And so God is elevating, amen, the birth of a child to understand, amen, that in that child, that child would produce, amen, a nation of believers, a nation of people that were pleasing unto the Lord. Can I get an amen? And this nation-child concept gives new meaning to Father's Day today. This nation-child distinction gives new meaning to Christ's great commission to teach all nations, praise the Lord. And it starts with the teaching of our children. We do so by teaching our children, and in doing so, we save our world or our nation. Point number one, children are a priority with God. They have a special place with God. They are his heritage and his reward, according to Psalms 127 and verse number three. Now watch, in Mark chapter 9, verse 36 through 37, the Bible says that Jesus took up a child, set him in the midst of them, and when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name receiveth me. I want us to notice the equivalence of a child in the receiving of Christ. That's how vital men that children are, praise God. They are his heritage. They are his reward. Those children that you and I birth, praise God, actually belong to God. They're just put on loan to us, amen. But God, amen, has a position and a job, amen, for them to to fulfill in the kingdom of God. Parents, uh, you are vital in raising that child so that they can be used mightily at the hand of God. I'll wait on you, praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is so vital for us to understand that the very words of Jesus, amen, tell us, amen, praise God, what will make a nation strong. When they said, who shall be great in the kingdom of God? They're bantering back and forth. And Jesus picks a child out of the crowd and brings it and sets that child in front of them. He says, this, amen, praise God, is what's going to make people great. This is what's going to make a nation great. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please hear me. The quickest way to change a nation is to change a child. 
Now, I want you to think for just a moment. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The quickest way to change a nation is to change a child. Does anybody see what's going on in our world today? Our children are being targeted by the extremists to fashion them into a nation of godless people, unregenerate people, praise God, a nation that is far removed from the ideals of true Christianity. You see, our world has a concept, amen, the people, praise God, that don't want to live for God, they have an understanding. If we can ingrain the children with worldliness and ungodliness, praise God, we can create a nation that is far removed from God without the concepts of Christianity or the principles of Christianity. I'm going to wait on you, praise God. It's amazing to me that they're even working in our schools today all the way down to kindergarten, and they are now trying to put in their minds, amen, a concept that is so far removed from God. Don't think it's strange, praise God, that they are attacking the children because they know, amen, they can bring forth, amen, an ungodly world and an ungodly nation, amen, through the child. Help me now. Praise God. This is challenging for us today. The headlines of our day are very disturbing. Satan has made a comeback in America. I'll wait on you. Amen. The enemy of our soul is having a heyday in the home or in the family life. Each day in America, over 8,000 teens lose their virginity. Praise God. Every year in America, more than a million teens, uh, teens excuse me, get pregnant. Praise God. These are some statistics, amen, that are are mind-numbing, praise God. There was a day, there was a time that children understood the Word of God to the point where they kept themselves, amen, uh, that uh, uh, sexual activity, amen, was only for the marriage vow, praise God, amen. I'm trying to tell you, we are living in a world that is bankrupt of God, amen, praise God, and our nation, amen, is going downhill, amen, praise the Lord, amen, all through, amen, ungodliness, amen, and where are they attacking us most? In our children. If we can get the children, amen, not to think of God and not to obey the word of God, we can create a nation, praise God, where we can do what we want. Amen. I'm trying to tell you, praise God, that every day in America, there are over 5,000 abortions that are taking place every day in our world. Amen. I pray that we understand how needed you and I are in setting a proper example before the children. The filth of this world is filled with violence and murder, a day that is unprecedented in evil. And nothing is more valuable today, amen, than our children today. Can I get an amen? Church, I don't want Jesus to return and find our children lost. I don't want him to return and find our grandchildren, amen, people of the world. Every generation, every home has a need for a godly father, for a spiritual dad. Dad, you need to remember that someone is watching you. Someone is following you. Someone is depending on you. And their lives and their destiny is literally in your hands. So, Dad, I'm asking you to man up. I'm asking you to take Take the, the responsibility. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be the example, amen, of a godly father. Praise God. Because you're not just building, amen, a family. You are building a nation today. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. There's a story in 2 Kings chapter 20 and 15. It's a horrible story affecting a nation in the past. There's a man by the name of Hezekiah, and the scene is one that you and I must never forget. This king of Judah invited the Babylonians into his palace and showed them everything, I mean, all of his treasures, everything that he possessed, amen. And Isaiah, the man of God, amen, the preacher came in and said, amen, praise God, that you have done wrong. He says these words, he says, everything you have shown will one day be taken away. That's bad enough to you lose, amen, your material goods, amen, your earthly possessions, praise God, because you have done something through pride and conceit. Now watch this, amen. And then after the king's death, the prophet says, after you die, your family will be taken away as captives and slaves. Uh, your sons and your daughters will be servants uh, and eunuchs, amen, to foreign powers. Maybe you didn't catch, amen, what I just read to you, amen. Please hear me, praise God. Uh, but those children would become eunuchs uh, no longer to produce, amen, no longer 
longer to bring forth a family. And all you got to do, amen, to destroy a nation is to destroy the family. Can I get an amen? I'm here to tell you, praise God, that Satan has targeted our children today. And if there's ever a time for the church to rise up and pray, it's to pray, amen, praise God, for our children because we're looking today, amen. You and I, amen, are getting up in years, uh, and maybe we won't be here tomorrow, but we need to make sure that there's going to be a church among our children, that our children are going to stand in these last days. Uh, they're not going to be just kids, uh, amen, of a family. They're going to be kingdom-minded kids. Uh, they're going to be family family oriented, amen. They're going to have God on their mind and in their hearts, amen. And they're going to build a kingdom for God. Now, I'm doing the best that I can, praise God, amen, but I'm trying to help us to understand. And in this story, it blew my mind when I read it again the other night, Hezekiah wasn't even the least concerned about his children being lost because God says, I will do this after you die. And Hezekiah said, well, that's good as long as it's not happening in my day. There was no concern, amen, with the future well-being of the children and the future well-being of the nation of Israel. And that seems to be the attitude of our day. Too many people don't care about America. They're not concerned, amen, praise God, amen, with our country today and the values of our country today. What made this country great? Hezekiah had no real concern, amen, for his offspring. He only cared about himself and the present situation. The end of his life was a story of lost treasures, but more than just lost treasures, but lost children. Dad, don't let this story be yours. Don't let this tragedy mark your life because, Dad, our children are at stake, and Satan today is attacking our families, our homes, and most importantly, our children. So I have to ask this morning, what are our priorities? Uh, are we doing everything that we can to rear our children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord? Now watch this. If the salvation of a child is depending upon me, does he or she have a chance to be saved? Amen. Praise God. Will my child, will my son... Will my daughter, amen, know the Lord? Will they be saved, amen, when the end of all time comes? Praise God. Now listen, I applaud those who say, for the sake of my children, I'm going to be a good example. Amen. I applaud those who say, for my children's sake, I will be faithful to the house of God. My hat is off to those fathers who withstand the world to raise their children in the things of God. Thank God for spiritual men and women who say, my children are important. And for the sake of my child, praise God, I'm going to be that example. I'm going to live a life before the Lord. I'm going to give them a chance, amen, to become something great in the kingdom of God. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he shall not depart from it. That training of a child, it didn't just say teach a child in the way he should go. Amen. Teaching sometimes, amen, comes down to just mere words. But training does more than just talk. Amen. Training is a walk. Training means you're living a life before them. Praise God. They watch you when you get up. They watch you when you go to bed. They watch you during the day. Praise God. And your life and your lifestyle will weigh heavy into their lives. Amen. Praise God. Ever seen a child, whether it's a daughter putting on uh, her mother's shoes or, or a boy putting on his daddy's shoes, trying to fill that role, amen. Every child has that. They say, I want to be like dad. I want to be like mom, praise God. Now hear me now, amen. I'm trying to tell you. And mom and dad, they are watching you whether you know it or not, praise God. People watch you, amen, where you go, what you do, what you say, amen. They watch how you dress and how you live, praise God. And it weighs, amen. That's training a child. It's not just teaching. It's not just preaching it's living a life before them everybody say amen. amen praise god you are training that child amen by example again abraham was not merely to be an ancestor of a nation but he was to be a builder of a nation his influence his example and even his sacrifice the whole narrative of his life produced a great and a mighty nation we read that in genesis 18 and 18 now watch isaac followed in his father's footsteps and then jacob followed in isaac's footsteps and every promise that was made to 
Abraham was handed down to his sons and to his sons' sons. Amen. Praise God. Now, that's something you need to understand. God started with Abram, turned him into Abraham, gave him children, praise God. But he says, I want you to know that promise that I gave to you, that covenant I made with you and your family, it's not going to stop with you. It's going to go to your son Isaac. And then it's going to go from Isaac, amen, to Jacob. And all through the scriptures, we talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It didn't just start, amen, the God of Abraham. He said, hey, the promise and the covenant went all the way down to your children, to your children's children. This is vital for us to understand, praise God, because these are powerful scriptures that God is trying to bring forth to us, amen, praise God. So every promise that was made to Abraham was also handed down to his sons and his sons' sons. Now I'll prove it, amen, Genesis 18 and 18, Abraham shall become a great and a mighty nation. Now we, if we were to stop reading there, we'd say, well, Abraham's going to be great, amen, praise God, in his day and time and during his uh, livelihood, Amen. Praise God. But then it says, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Now watch. Genesis 21 and 18. I moved us in that direction in the scriptures. God's promise to Abraham becomes God's promise to Isaac. Watch. Genesis 21 and 18. Arise, lift up the lad, talking about Isaac, hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Praise God. I'm trying to tell you it's more than just children being born. It's a nation that's being birthed. Praise God. It may start, amen, with with one man, but it doesn't end with one man. It's going to pass, praise God, down through, amen, your lineage, amen, praise the Lord. Does anybody want their children saved? Does anybody want your children blessed of the Lord? Do you want your children, amen, praise God, to achieve great things, amen, through God? Well, Dad, you play an important role. And then Genesis 46 and verse 3. We're moving 20 more chapters down the way. God's word is given concerning now Jacob, which is Isaac's son. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father Abraham. Fear not to go down into Egypt. Watch, I will make of thee a great nation. Now I'm telling you, this does something to me. I don't just want Abraham great. I want his children great. And I'm going to build a nation, amen, praise God, that's going to stand for God. Dads, do you realize how important this is? The trail flowed from one to the next. And while all other nations fell into degradation and the worship of other gods, a multiplicity of other gods, this nation, this family worshiped the one true living God, Jehovah. They weren't confused, amen, when other nations arose and built their shrines and built their temples and began to build their altars, amen, praise God. They weren't confused, amen, when they lifted up, amen, an idol out of stone or wood and they would begin to worship something, praise God, that cannot see, cannot hear, and cannot help you, praise God. But the children of Abraham were established on the principles that there's not but one God and he is Jehovah God and we're not going to worship anything else. Now, I'm here to tell you because Abraham stood fast, amen, Isaac stood fast, Jacob stood fast, the nation of Israel stood fast. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That was ingrained, amen, from generation to generation, and it created a great nation before God. Come on, let's put our hands together and clap in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, that does something to me, amen. They worshiped the one true living God. It even goes further than that. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would come the nation of Israel. Remember, Abraham, there's Isaac. Isaac, there's Jacob. From Jacob, there's the 12 tribes. Jacob's name through a wrestling match with God is changed to Israel, a mighty nation in the Lord. Where did it start? Where did it come from? Praise God. But it even goes further than that. From Abraham to Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, 
from Jacob to the nation of Israel and from the nation of Israel. Now watch, amen, praise God. From the nation of Israel would come the Savior of the world. And you're saying, well, what are you saying, amen, praise God? It started with a godly father. It started with a man of faith. Amen, praise God. He passed it on, amen, to his son. His son passed it on, amen, to his son. And his son passed it on to their sons, praise God, to the point, amen, that through time, amen, God was more than just building a family. He was building a nation. God was more than just building a nation. He was building a Savior. This is why it's so important for us to understand, amen, the gravity of the scriptures, amen, that I have brought out to you about fathers, amen, because influence goes a long way. Instruction in righteousness carries a lot, a, a heavy load. That living principle called righteousness receives, watch, divine promises, divine appointments, and divine inheritance, amen. I want my children to make it to heaven. I want my grandchildren, amen, to make it to heaven. Praise God. Hear me again. They got a divine promise. They got a divine appointment from God, and they got a divine inheritance from the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, it says, righteousness exalteth a nation. Well, what's the opposite of that? Praise God. Unrighteousness, amen, brings down a nation. Amen. America, the beautiful. America, the blessed. Now, this August, it will be 40 years that I have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but I've been in the church, amen, for 43 years, amen, praise God. Just took me longer to get the Holy Ghost than some of you, amen, praise God. But I have seen things change in our nation. I can remember how blessed America was, amen. We were at the top of the list. Everybody wanted to move to America because it was the land of the blessed. Why was America known as the land of prosperity and the land of the blessed? I'll tell you why, because the hand of God. God was on it. God was building a nation, praise God. And as long as we keep God at the forefront, amen, praise the Lord, then we will become, amen, a strong nation before the world, amen, praise God. But you take God, amen, out of it, amen, hallelujah. We won't even get the rains that we need. We won't get the crops, amen, praise God. The harvest, amen, won't be there. But with God, amen, we have a promise of not only the former rain, but the latter rain, praise God. And so God says, if you'll return unto me, I'll return unto you, praise God. If you'll seek the Lord, you can find God, amen. He can be found. Does anybody want to be blessed of the Lord? I'm here to tell you, moms and dads, dads, amen, you have a responsibility. You got an obligation, praise God. Don't you want to see your kids get the Holy Ghost? Don't you want to see your kids baptized in Jesus' name, ready to meet the Lord when he comes? Help me now, praise God, amen, hallelujah. Righteousness exalteth a nation. Well, if it exalts a nation, it starts by exalting children before the Lord. A God-fearing child is immeasurable and incalculable. I don't have time. I'm running out of time. But the story of Samuel is tremendous. As a young boy, Hannah had prayed for him and devoted him, amen, to the Lord, gave him to the Lord all the days of his life, amen, praise God. And you look at him, and he became one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. He's one of my favorite. I mean, I like a lot of them, praise God, amen. I'm, I'm not against any of them, but I like Samuel. There's words in there. God did let none of his words, amen, fall to the ground. That means, amen, that he had a walk with God. He had a talk with God, amen. He was used of God. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets fits in the Old Testament. But where did it start? With his parents, amen, Hannah and the father Elkanah. Now, I never heard anybody preach on Elkanah. Elkanah, amen, was the husband to Hannah. But now watch, amen, sometimes we miss this, amen, why, where was Hannah when she prayed? She was at the tabernacle. She was up there, amen, praise God, in Shiloh. That's where it was, amen, where it was built. And Elkanah made sure his family, amen, praise God, made it all the way there for that feast. You didn't hear me. It wasn't just Hannah that brought the child. It was the father that brought the child and the mother, praise God. Hey, amen, you're saying, well, he wasn't born yet, but he was fixing to be born. And because the father made sure that he was obeying the word of God, he was in the house of God, God says, amen, I can move on this father, and this father can have a son, and this son, praise God, amen, can be used, amen, for the kingdom of God. Is that all right? 
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So a God-fearing child is, in, is immeasurable and incalculable. Through a God-fearing child, a nation can flourish and prosper. A nation can thrive and survive. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Some of you recognize that as the Pledge of Allegiance. But that's not only the American Pledge of Allegiance. That's the Christian's Pledge of Allegiance to Almighty God. That's the standard of success. One nation under God. That's the gateway to prosperity. And it has to do with every home and every child being instructed in the ways of God. I read something, amen, the other day, amen, and I want to bring it out. It's found in Judges chapter 2 and verse number 10. Now, we usually quote the last part of that verse. Most of us, amen, have it kind of cataloged into our, our memory bank, amen, but it says there arose a generation that knew not the Lord. And we like to quote that, praise God, amen, that's devastating. How did they go from a godly people to an ungodly people? How did they go from being a nation blessed of the Lord to a nation cursed of God? But now watch this. Amen. I read it, amen, for myself the other day. And I'm going to just pick up on the first part. It says, and also, it's talking about the death of Joshua. He lived to be 110 years, amen. Now he's died. But now watch this part of the verse of Judges 2 and 10. It says, God, and also, all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. God is driving a point home, praise God, amen, that these children, amen, are going to act just like mom and dad. They're gathered under their fathers, praise God. God is driving home a point, amen, of how vital and how important, amen, a father is, a godly father. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I understand it's a valuable truth. Fathers are instrumental in the building not only of a home and a family, but in the building of a nation. And so, amen, in our text of Genesis 18 and 19, it's probably one of the greatest texts in all of the Word of God. I'm coming to a close. I've got five minutes. Praise God. God says to Abraham, now watch, I know him. I know that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord, and they shall do justice and judgment. Again, a God-fearing child is immeasurable. Dad, each child will one day become a nation. A nation full of hopes and dreams. A nation full of hopes, amen, and promises. A nation of people serving God. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, think it not strange when he talks about the church. He says, you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a peculiar people, amen, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, amen, praise God. Mom and dad, God did something great in your life by calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And now you are to let your light so shine, not only among men, but among your family, so they too can become that peculiar people, that chosen generation, and that royal priesthood. It all started with a father who would become a father of nations. So the question has been asked, will that little girl of yours one day be another Nona Freeman to reach Ethiopia? I have a couple of books written by this woman, and I want you to know she's probably one of the greatest preachers I've ever heard. Now, as far as a sermonizer, she's not a sermonizer, but she was mildly used of God, and when she spoke, she was highly anointed, and God used her, amen, in the gifts of miracles and the gifts of healing, and she was great, amen, praise God, in the nation of Ethiopia. Will that little boy that you have brought forth, amen, become another T. Windross to reach the nation of Mexico? He is now dead and gone, amen. His son are now filling that position on foreign lands, praise God, reaching, amen, that country. Will your child or my child be the next Gordon Mallory to reach the Philippines when he was here, greatly used of God, amen. He preached for us, amen, in the house, amen, praise God, was filled, amen, with the cloud, amen, of glory as the anointing of the Lord rested upon that man, and he has won so many people in the Philippines. You see, Dad, it starts with us. We have to remove the stumbling blocks. We have to set boundaries for our children. 
We have to make church a priority. Amen. We have to be the example. I like what one preacher said. Amen. He was, he was also one of the greatest preachers. Amen. Brother Robert E. Bear. I remember him telling me about his children. Amen. He said his little old children, they'd sit around the table. But he said, man, he said, we'd go to church. Praise God. And the children would sometimes complain. Amen. Oh, I don't want to do this. He said, as long as you park your feet under my table, you're going to church. As long as I'm putting clothes on your back, you're going to church. We've got a world today that says, well, let the children decide, amen, praise God, what they're going to be and what they're going to do. Children don't have enough information to make those kind of in decisions, amen. That's why we have to teach them. We have to ingrain them by the word of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise God. It started with the Father, but it doesn't end with the Father. And their lives, amen, are in our hands. There's a nation that's in the making. So let's build a nation, but let's build it right. Most of us know about the story of Noah. I'm closing. His stand in a very ungodly world. His undivided devotion to God. Can you imagine for 120 years with hammer and saw, he worked, amen, building, amen, not just an ark. He was building something greater than an ark. He was building, amen, a nation unto God. Hear me now, praise God. And through that one door, amen, his children all entered in and became nation builders themselves. Because when the ark landed, praise God, on Mount Ararat, amen, the Bible says that all out of those three sons, amen, they were dispersed, amen, praise God, into different nations. And they were to be nation builders. Somebody help me now. Praise God. I'm doing the best that I can. I'm closing. So hold on. 120 years, amen, he just kept being an example before his children. So, Dad, you're it. You need to bring those children to church. Your children, your grandchildren, bring them to church. Church is a wonderful place to go for they'll not only find the house of God, they'll find the God of the house. Somebody say the birth of a nation. And this is what I want to close with. In Genesis 18 and 19, God says, to, I know him. I know Abraham. I know he's going to command his children to live right and to serve the Lord. I know he'll command them and they'll do justly and upright. Now watch this. The other day I got to speak to a friend. His father was one of the best friends that I've had. Great preacher, Brother Motes. He preached for us several times. His son is at a loss, still grieving over his dad. It's been less than a year. His dad died at a very early age in his 50s. And his son calls me every now and then, needs to talk. He says, Brother Crudus, he said, I got my mind made up. I want to live for God. But he said, sometimes, amen, I feel like God's not hearing me. Amen. So he said the other night he was praying. He said it was about 1.30 in the morning. He knelt down and he was just praying. God, I really need you to talk to me. Now watch this. He said his door opened and his little son, I think his son is five years old, came in at 1.30 in the morning, said, Dad, he saw his dad praying. He said, Dad, can I pray with you? And he said, yeah, come on, son. And they started praying. And just within a few moments, the boy looked at his dad, and he says, Dad, God's telling me to be baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> now watch. And he says, well, son, has the Lord told you that you need the Holy Ghost? And he goes, no, Dad. He said, let's pray. And they pray a few minutes later. The boy jumps up and says, Dad, God told me to get the Holy Ghost. Now watch. The conversation's almost over. And the boy looks to his dad. And he says, Dad, how come God doesn't talk to me very often? And his dad said, son, how often do you talk to God? Come on, come on. That's why in Genesis 18 and 19, when God said about Abraham, I know him, it's because Abraham kept talking to God. Let's put our hands together. Let's clap before the Lord. Let's give him praise in this house. Praise God. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's sing. Let's stand in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Abraham talked to God. Amen. So often you'll find the dialogue throughout the scriptures. And we'll find even when the Bible says, and God spoke to Abraham. But it wasn't out of the clear blue. Abraham had already been talking to God. And it's a two-way street. Amen. Praise God. If you want to hear from God, God wants to hear from you. And I believe it's reciprocal. I believe, amen, as we begin to talk to God, God begins to talk to us, amen. That's why, amen, prayer, amen, is so important, praise the Lord. We can get direction through prayer. We can hear from God. God can talk to our heart. He can tell you you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. He can tell you you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's sing before the Lord. thank the Lord so you're building more than a family you're building a nation a nation a holy nation and a peculiar people that will stand before the Lord and be used of God in these last days thank the Lord for the word this morning praise God happy Father's Day fathers you have a great and wonderful position you have a great and wonderful responsibility. Serve the Lord. Lead your children in the ways of God. Be faithful to the things of God. Be faithful to the house of God. And you are giving your children a heritage. Amen. Praise the Lord as a nation builder. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. There is no... Um, Bible study this afternoon at 3 o'clock, amen, Father's Day. We want you to spend time with your families, and I'm praying for you. Brother Richard, thank you for those tremendous gifts, amen, praise God. Thank you for that. Praise the Lord, amen. I, I really appreciate that, man. I honor you for that, praise God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, no Monday night prayer, amen, people are still traveling, amen, it's a holiday, Praise God. But Wednesday night, amen, we're going to have service at 7 o'clock. So come back. Let's be in the house of the Lord, and let's build a nation. Amen. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus.